that you travel. He said he'd never leave you, nor will he ever, ever, ever forsake you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we give you praise this morning. Hallelujah. You're worthy, 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 worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God in this place today. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Lord. You're worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. The highest praise is hallelujah. Glory to God. If you had 10,000 tongues, hallelujah, it wouldn't be enough to tell God, thank you for all that he's done. Hallelujah. I don't know about you. Hallelujah. But I've got some testimonies to talk about God's goodness. And the way I got to those testimonies, hallelujah, is I had to go through some tests. Hallelujah. I had to go through some trials. Hallelujah. But God himself always, 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 I said he always came through. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Ha. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the midst of the storm, God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. In the trials, God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He's faithful. I said he's faithful. Hallelujah. He is faithful. Hallelujah. I want you to turn with me to Ecclesiastes chapter 3. And we're going to read a little bit about life. Please stand for the reading of the word if you're able to stand. If you're not, I understand fully. Hallelujah. The Bible says there is a time for everything. And a season for every activity under the heavens. There's a time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot whatever has been planted. There's a time to kill and there's a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones, and a time to gather them up, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to search, and a time to give up, <laughs> a time to keep, hey, and a time to throw away, hallelujah, a time to tear, and a time to mend, a time to be silent, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. You may be seated. So goes the story of life. For the young people, some of you haven't experienced some of these things. But there are those of us who are more mature chronologically and we've seen some things we have had some experiences and so with those experiences come an understanding that there's a time for things to occur we all need to understand that things do change mm -hmm. they're not going to be the same always but we seem to get stuck in a spot when things change and that it seems not to be in our favor and at that time we want to begin to whine and cry and weep and mourn and lament oh how good it used to be and why am I having this problem now because the word said you would the word says you would so when these things happen we need to rest in knowing who God is father we as we come this morning it is my prayer, God, that we be encouraged through the word of God. 
It is my prayer, God, that for those of us who are going through things, we are bolstered in our faith knowing that this season is going to pass. It won't be here forever. God, for those of us who are planning marvelous changes in our lives, whatever those changes may be, may your word now begin to prepare them to plan for what it is that they're going through. And God, for those of us who are lamenting, mourning, weeping, crying, complaining, stir us up, God, with your word. Remind us, God, of your faithfulness. Let us know that nothing happens that comes by you, by accident or by surprise. Remind us, God, that you said in your word that you would never leave us nor forsake us. Holy Spirit, speak to us this morning. Not me, but you. Whatever it is, God, that you have us to know. I'm an oracle. I am yielded to you. Whatever it is that you'd have me to say, Lord, that I will say in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Nothing is going to remain the same. And we can just ask God to help us as things change in our lives. The writer of Ecclesiastes is saying some things here. He's telling us that there are going to be some different seasons in our lives. And we should not be surprised when these things occur. Nor should we give up because for everything that happens, there's something that happens after that happens. That's not the end. Some people will welcome the changes that come, and some of us will dread the changes that come. You know, we are, I don't care what we say about it, we're getting older. Mm -hmm. And the body does what it does. It's going to do what it's going to do. You know, there are the people who live the most, I guess, healthy lives ever imaginable. But guess what? They die too. Mm -hmm. There are those of us who are not really tuned into, you know, what we should be doing with our health and our bodies. And we have some struggles in that area. But that's all a part of life. Whatever you're struggling with, know that the Bible tells us, you know, that we have a helper. We have a comforter. We have somebody who walks alongside. We have somebody who walks on the inside of us. We have now uh, the greater one living on the inside of us. So whatever it is that we're going through and whatever it is that we're dealing with, we're going to come out of this thing. And whatever remains is what remains. God and his word never, ever change. Never change. So just suppose the only way God could get you or me to where he wants us to be, if the only way was that we had to go through some adversity, we had to have some bad experiences. Sometimes these are experiences that we cause. On up. Uh-huh. On up. Sometimes there are things that we cause. And sometimes there are things that God himself initiates. He ordains it to be so. The Bible says that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. So some of the things that we go through have been ordered. They have been predestined because God is taking us somewhere. He's taking us to a destiny that he wants us to arrive at. And sometimes the only way, sometimes the only way is a hard way. It won't be hard always. But there are some things that we're going to have to go through. And we're going to learn some lessons as we go through. We're going to learn how faithful God is. We're going to learn that all that word that apostle and pastor and other ministers have preached to us has taken root. And as a result of that, we got some faith down on the inside of us that when we are pressed out of measure, we're able to come out of the word of God and we're able to say to the devil, we're able to say to the storm, we're able to say to the naysayers, but God said, God said, hallelujah. I know it doesn't look good right now, but I know what God says. 
I know that, you know, it may not be working in my favor right now, but I know what God has promised me. And God is not a man that he should lie, nor is he the son of man that he should repent. Wherever he sends his word to, his word accomplishes what it's supposed to do. So I know, God, your word is in me. I'm in the situation, and I know it's going to be all right. I don't know when, I don't know how, but it's going to be all right. Hallelujah, glory to God. How would it be if you never had any bad times? If all your times were good times, you wouldn't know how to appreciate the good times because that's all you ever experienced. But when you've been through some bad times, and there's a song that says, my good days outweigh my bad days, well, you know, I have to take exception with that. If he's talking about numbers, I can tell, no, that's not the way that went. Because I've seen quite a few of the bad days. But if you're talking about quality, I can tell you, yep, the good days far outweigh my bad days. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Because in my good days, God has been there. He's been beside me all the way. And I can look back and I can say, God, you brought me through that. It was bad, but you brought me through. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hey, how about if the only way we could change to be more like Jesus is we had to do some suffering like Jesus. Oh, we don't want to do no suffering. Mm -mm, mm -mm. It's kind of like, no, just translate me, God, from here to there. I'll be all right. Just transform me however you need to do it and then move me over here. I'm good. But no, it doesn't work that way. Uh -uh. When you're growing up spiritually, you're going to go through some things and it's going to necessitate that you cry out to God. You're going to have to cry out in prayer. We're going to have to ask God, say, God, you know, this thing is going on and I need this situation to turn around and only you can turn it around. I've done all I know how to do. I should have come to you first, but I didn't. But I'm here now, God. And I know that because I'm here, hallelujah, I know that you hear me because I'm coming to you with the word of God on my tongue. And I know that you honor your word. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Been through some things. Hallelujah. But God is faithful. Yes, he is. Woo! How about if the only way to get promoted is that you had to get demoted? Mm, mm. You were on that job and baby, you were rolling through that thing like 90 going north. You had all of the degrees all lined up. Things were all across your wall. Your bank account was fat. Everybody knew your name, and your name was good. You just were kind of like, hey, look, I can do no wrong. Oh, look out. Wait a minute. Whoa, hold up. Watch out. Oh, God, some things can slap you sideways. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, everything is going right, and then, wow. Hmm, everything that was on your side, all that was going in your favor, all the people who said they liked you, the ones who were impressed with your abilities. Oh, you so good. Oh, baby, you can do this job like nobody else. You my favorite person on this here job. Right. One thing can happen and flip that upside down. Your character gets assassinated. Your work quality gets assassinated. You can't do enough for the same persons. You can't do it correct enough to be pleasing. Your evaluations start looking real funky. It's kind of like, well, who wrote this? Where are you? Oh, you know, you, there's a process by which you can contest it, but give me the process, because here I come. You got to show me something, baby. Show me where I messed up. I don't have a problem. If you can prove it, I'm good. But if you can't prove it, you got a problem. Uh-huh, because you thought I was crazy before. Wait a minute. Uh-huh. I will really have to pray hard. Holy Ghost, don't let me go in there and start running my mouth now. Mm-mm, hold on to me. Don't let me do that. Now, see, I know some of y'all won't be honest. I'm, you know, I'm saved and I've never done it, whatever. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Sorry about that, but I really, really don't. Because I know that we're all human. You may not act on it 
but don't tell me you don't feel it. When you're being mistreated, when you're, when you're being abused, when you're being looked over for what you know you qualify for, when you know that you've done the job to the best of your ability, you are not a shirker. You know you weren't hiding in the bathroom, reading your Bible and preaching and praying to people on the phone. You were in there doing your work. Sometimes you didn't even take a break. And then you get mistreated. Oh, so you're going to sit in that chair and go, okay, uh-huh. All right, well, go sit on over there because I'm telling you who's not going to sit over there with you. That's going to be me. Okay, no, no, no. You do what you're supposed to do. And after all of that, sometimes things go wrong. Well, God is saying, don't be upset, Willie Mary. Don't go in there acting a fool with the people. Mm -hmm. I saw it coming. Tried to show you, but you didn't listen. Uh, nobody ever been there before? God, you will have those dreams in the midnight hour and wake up and say, well, why did I dream about that? Well, what is that, Lord? You know, instead of stopping like we've been taught, stop. Ask God to show you what that dream was all about because you don't know. And don't be going to the witch doctor and the voodoo lady because she don't know either. Mm, I, I said that. Yes, I did. Because I know that some people do, even people who go to church. Uh-huh. So ask God about it. God is trying to show you some things. And when he shows you, you are, you are being prepared for what's going to happen. Now, you got to understand something. God has already been there. He already saw that. He knows who's being used by the devil. He knows the traps that they set up for you. But we get so busy in pleasing people and being so fond of being pat on the back, getting those little five and dime raises, because that's really what it amounts to when you think about the money that they make. They ain't doing you no big favor, really. Uh, hello? I mean, the, the, big, the big money goes to somebody else. You, ain't get, you don't get that. You may be qualified, but you're not going to get that in that position. Go out and do your own thing. Start your own. Call your own shots. Uh -huh. tell, tell yourself how much you want to make. Make out your own budget. Mm -hmm. now, I'm serious about that thing. I've always had that entrepreneurial mind. Make up your mind. Hey, look, this is what I want, and the way I'm going to get it is this way. God, you put it in me. I need you to help me bring it to pass. Show me where I want to go. Takes me to another point, talking about change. Sometimes you got to come out of where you are. You get comfortable being paid on the 15th and the 30th or every Friday or every whenever, whatever day it is. Oh, I, I got a guaranteed check. That's wonderful. How much are they guaranteed to pay you? Well, you know, it's so and so. Okay, but you know, you could take those same skills and expertise. You could go somewhere and do something for yourself, and you can double, triple, quadruple, whatever it is that you're getting. But in order to do that, you got to make some sacrifices. You can't hang around with your lackadaisical going nowhere buddies. Mm -hmm. You got some people, you know, they are just lovely people. But they are going now where at all and if you want to go somewhere love them yes but understand you got to appropriate your time your talents and your abilities toward things that you want i love you hey i love you like a sister but i can't hang with you every day okay because you're doing some things over there that's not going to profit me anything and god is preparing me for greater be careful be careful about your associations. Learn what you need to know about people as you're going through your seasons. You may go through some seasons, and at the end of that season, at the beginning of the season, you had 30 people. End of the season, you might have 20. The next season that you go through, you might end it with 10. Then you'll get down to five. And pretty soon, it may not be nobody but you and God, but you're good. You're good. You're good. All your secrets that you tell him, he's not going to tell anybody. All your faults that you have, he's not discussing it over Kool-Aid and tea and oxtails and chicken wings and fries and all that kind of stuff. He's not over there talking your business. Those things that you have confided in God with us between you and God. And sometimes you get to a point where that's where it has to be. Understand me. I said that's a change. 
Because you've been accustomed to having a whole wagon load of people. Well, sometimes you need to stop the wagon, unhitch it from your horse, and take off. Lead them over there in the wagon. They'll be fine. I assure you they will figure it out. Now, they're not going to stay there and die. Except that change is something that you cannot change. I said change is something that you cannot change. It's not going to happen. I don't care how much you will it not to be, and you can confess whatever you want to over change. But the Bible says, uh uh, as long as it is, there's going to be seed, time, and harvest. That, that implies change to me. You sow something, time passes, and then there's a harvest. So things are changing, they're not staying in place. Now, if we choose to stay in place, that's our business. But guess what? We're not going to get what God wants us to have. In every season of your life, every season, I don't care, good, bad, or indifferent, we got to learn something. Trust God for the future. Things may be rolling great for you now. My daddy used to say this all the time, baby, the wind don't blow the same way all the time. You got to understand that it may be going real good now, but a change is going to come. Don't get kicked off the boat when the change comes because, oh, now this is all, whoa, I, I'm all out of sorts now, as I have had the tendency to do in my lifetime. I don't mind admitting it. I've really gotten out of sorts sometimes when things changed. But I've learned that God is with me, and you can trust God when you can't trust anybody else, even your own self. Because your own self is subject to do some stuff that you didn't think you would do. You'd be like, oh, no, I would never do that. Well, you may because you haven't been that way yet. Maybe you haven't had that experience yet. Maybe you don't know what it's really like yet. But when you get in that spot, if you're not prayed up, if you have not been spending a whole lot of time in the Word, if you haven't been turning that plate down, you've been eating all the crabs and shrimp and stuff you could eat, as we have a tendency to do sometimes. If that's what you've been doing, you have not built up anything except your belly. And when you go through these things, you're not prepared. You're not prepared to get through it. So you don't know what you would do. And stop judging other people. Oh, how could they do that? The same way you could do it, mm, the way you probably did it, and we just don't know yet. Maybe you are doing it, and we don't know. I don't know. God knows all things. Mm -hmm, that's what I do know. Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13 says that God has a hope and a future for those who are seeking him with their whole heart. So if you are seeking God with your whole heart, you got a future. Don't let the devil tell you that you are in despair. Don't let the devil tell you that you're never going to get out of this. Don't let him tell you, oh, you're going to die before you ever get that. He is a liar and the father of lies. We need to understand that there's a hope that God has for us, and we need to have hope in the hope that God has. I don't care what kind of despair you're in. Yeah, we have bad days. And sometimes, you know, sometimes you just don't feel like you're going to be able to make it. But guess what? That's not what God said. Mm -mm, that's not what he said. That don't let whatever you're going through now determine your future. Don't let it determine it. Sometimes we get in a place we were supposed to be going through the valley, and we camp out in the valley. Sometimes, you know, we're in the fire, and it's so hot, you know, you are literally paralyzed. You can't do anything. Hey, what, what now? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. It's time to go to God and say, look. I'm in this mess, and I admit I don't know how to get out of it. If I did it, I don't mind saying, God, I did it. It was me. But I know that you are my daddy, and you love me. Yes, he does. And you will show me how to get out of this. You will bring me through this. I didn't come here to stay. You can't tell what's ahead of you by looking at your current situation. You may not have a dime now. Your bank account might be on past zero. Matter of fact, they probably told you to come over here and close it because if you don't, we will. Matter of factly, you owe us all these fees because you didn't have nothing in here and we're still charging you. Where is our money? Mm -hmm. 
And if you don't bring me some money, this is going to go on your credit report like that's really going to make a difference when it's already almost at zero. But, you know, hey, they try to threaten you anyway. You know, it's kind of like, well, okay. <laughs> well, all righty then. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. Whatever it is now, it can change. It can change. You say, well, you know, I don't have, a, you know, the best paying job. I don't have. The, so what are you doing with the job that you do have? Are you saving a dime? Oh, but you know, I only get X amount of dollars. Well, did you save at least $1? Uh, are you doing anything differently? I mean, you know, you, are you trying to see how many times a day you can go out and spend money? Are you looking for things to spend money on? Or are you really being a good steward of what God has given you? Oh, I give my tithes and offering. Okay, what you do with the other 90%? You know, so you, let's say you tithe, on, yeah, that's 10, that leaves you 90, and most people give about maybe another 10, maybe. So at least you have 80. Now, what are you doing with the 80? Prepare yourself for a change. If you don't want to be in that spot, you need to take that 80 and make it work. You need to cut back where you can. You don't need every pair of shoes that come out. You don't have to be shopping in Bell Harbor when you can barely afford to shop at the flea market at Northside. Because you want to impress your girlfriends or you want to impress the men. What? Uh-uh. That ain't impressing nobody. You know, you just seen what, how big a fool you can be. How big a fool can you be? So prepare for the next season. If you want to get out of poverty, you want to get out of lack, God has already made you promises. And God is not, he's, he's not confused concerning his promises. They are yes and they are amen. I stand knowing that God can take you from nothing to something and something and something. That's the kind of God we serve. That's the kind of God we serve. And he doesn't need major, major, major interventions to make things happen on your behalf. God can do that. So prepare for your future. Oh, but I got a future. What, so what are you doing to prepare for it? Hmm. This season is not going to last forever. The only season that we know is going to last forever is when we get to heaven. And as far as I know, we're not there yet. Now, you may think that you are, and that's wonderful, but I'm here to bust your bubble. You're not there yet. You're still here with the rest of us, and we're all dealing with some stuff down here. When you're going through your storm, don't assume the worst. The devil tells you that this is devastating. He tells you that no, this is not going to change in your favor, not ever, 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 but that's not what the word of God says. Hold on to what the word says. The word says that it's a season and it's going to change. Be prepared to move. Don't always assume the worst. The season is a chapter in your book, not the whole book. I know some people who have a book. Well, first it started off as a sentence. And then it went to a paragraph. And then it went to several pages, and it became an essay. And then it was their thesis. And then it was their doctrinal statement. And now they got a great big old book of nothing. Why? Because they made a decision. I'm going to stay right here. I'm going to be bitter. I'm going to be mad at the person who wronged me. I'm going to hate them until God calls me. I'm never going to forgive them. When you develop that kind of attitude, you're saying you don't believe what God has said. God said, forgive that you could be forgiven. He said, forget those things that are behind you. That's what Paul said. You know, press toward the mark. Whatever has happened, has happened. Close the whole book, not the chapter. Close the book down. Go outside, throw it in the garbage, do whatever. Get rid of it and start anew. It doesn't matter how old we are. No, no, no. I'm starting new things now. Because God said I could, so that's what I'm going to do. You got to understand that as long as there's breath in your body, there's hope. Mm -hmm. If you're breathing, there's hope. Whatever you can do, get up and do with that. Work with it. Mm -hmm. or work with it until it becomes what you want. The Bible tells us that you, you can be at peace in the midst of your season. Your storm may be bad, but you can still be at peace. And how can you get it? Because Philippians 4, 6, and 7 tells us. It says, be anxious for nothing. 
Don't worry about it. Stop complaining about it. Stop bemoaning it. Don't, be, don't, don't give a lot of thought to that. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, make your requests known. Tell God about it. Tell him about whatever it is that you're dealing with. Be honest with God. Stop trying to play with God. How are you today? Oh, I'm well. It is well. Everything is good. I'm just looking to everything. Oh, oh, couldn't be better. Yes, it could. Yes, it could. A lot better. I, when I look at most people, I know it could be a whole lot better than what I see. Now, I don't, there's some things that I don't know, but I know it could be better than that. Me included. Mm -hmm. But, you know, tell God about it. And then God has promised us that the peace of God, that surpasses all understanding. When you're in the midst of the fire, you can be at peace. Do you know that you can't move forward if you're always in turmoil? You're in conflict, looking like a cluttered basement, your mind is just all full of stuff. You can't do anything. I can't do anything when it's like that. I need peace in my life in order to move where God has destined me to go. So pray and ask God about it. He'll guard your heart. He'll guard your mind. Mm -hmm. As nobody and nothing else can. Oh, if I had a million dollars. If you had a million dollars and the same mindset, you'd just be a miserable person with a million dollars until you figure out how to lose that. That's the truth. I'm sorry, but that's it. That is it. Your current struggle is not forever. It's going to go away. Don't panic while you're going through your season. You know, when you panic... You make crazy decisions. When you're panicked, you know, you're liable to do some really, really crazy stuff out of desperation because you want it to end. You know, some people go, well, you know, God is taking me through this season in life, you know, and I'm just going to be patient and, you know, and I'm just going through it. Well, that happens for me later because in the beginning, that's not the way it starts off. In the beginning, I'm in a panic. And I want it to be over now. And I'm saying, dear God, I'm coming to you with my petition. I know what you said in your word, and here I am. Thank you, sir. But I wish respectfully to request that you please hurry up with it. Okay. I, I want to be out of this. I want to, you know, I'm, I had enough of that. I'm ready to move on now. Take me to something else. Enough. Thank you, Lord. I got it. I, I think I got it. We, Honestly, we don't know. Most times we don't have it, but we are so panicked, we want to get out of where we are. And God is saying, you know, let patience have its perfect work in you. Mm -hmm. I never asked for any patience once I found out how you got it. Apostle taught that in this church, and I was like, uh-huh, okay, well, not going to be asking for any of that because I know how that works. But God in his infinite wisdom knows what we need. And you will get to some things where you can't move right nor left, front nor back. You're going to be right there. And God says, now I got you where I want you. Now I can talk to you. Now the things that I want to groom and nurture you in, I'm able to do it because you can't move. You can't move. You know, many times if we could move, we would move to the other side of the earth. It's kind of like. If I could get away from this, I would go way over there somewhere. I'd be like, David said, you know, oh, that I could take the wings of the morning dove and fly up out of here. I'd be gone. But God said, no, I need you to stay right there because there's something that I want you to do. There's something that I'm, I'm, I'm grooming you for. I'm, I'm doing a work in you. It may not be for something great, but it could be something for the kingdom. And as long as I get to heaven, if I got to stay in that spot and keep doing it, Mm -hmm. You know, there are people who go, you know, well, I, need, I only want so and so and so. No, 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 no. I want to get in there. That's what I want. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So if it means I've got to go through some things, then God, I'll just go through it. In the seasons of your life, walk by faith, not by sight. Don't focus on what you see. Don't focus on who you see. Don't focus on who you don't see that you thought you would see because you thought they were going to be there with you. And oh, because they're not there. Oh, I just can't make it. You better regroup and understand that God is with you. And if he's with you, you'll get through this. You're going to be just fine. Faith in God. This is a, there's another dimension to all of this stuff. Stay focused. 
stay focused. You can't be all over the place and entertaining all kinds of thoughts when you're going through things. You need to focus on who God is and what God can do. Later for all that other stuff. Sometimes things start to, you know, fall off. You'll, you'll find as you get older that some things that you thought were important, they have little, if any, significance at all. You look at it and you say, you know what? I spent a lot of time with that. That was a total waste of my time. I could have been doing something else. But again, you know, I go to the Word and I try not to lament. <laughs> Because the word did say that there are seasons, right? So I'm now in the season of realizing what I should have realized back then. But it's okay. <laughs> it's all right. We know that in all of these things that we're going through, Romans 8 and 28 is true. All things, all of your seasons, all of the turmoil in your seasons, all of the things that you've had to endure, all of the good, all of the bad, all of the ugly, are working together for those who love God. And those who are called according to his purpose. There's a purpose for every one of us. My purpose is not your purpose. Yours is not mine. But God has called each one of us to a purpose. And there's something that he's working out. And even when I can't see it, even when it seems like nothing is going my way, understand that God's at work. God is working on that thing. He's working on your behalf with people that you can't move. You never will. You can't change grown people. They are who they are. They got grown all without you. And they're not going to change necessarily because of you. That's for all of us. So we have to learn to accept people where they are. Or you can leave them where you find them. I said you can leave them where you find them. Sometimes you have to do that. God will call you sometimes to a new place. I want to reference Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. And the Lord said to Abram, leave your country, your people, your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. That's what I need you to do. I need you to get up from where you are because you're very comfortable there. Leave those people over there, you know, all you kin folks. Sometimes kin folks are good, but sometimes they're, to me, too much work. Oh, sorry, but... That's just been my experience. I love them, but you know how it goes. Uh, he told him, you know, leave all of that behind you. He said, I'm going to make you into a great nation. And I will bless you. I will make your name great. And you will be a blessing. Think about where God has brought you from now. Everybody think, think about it. He says, I'll bless those who bless you. Some people forget that, you know. They treat God's people any kind of way. Sometimes even in your families, you know, that they can do things to you and just get over, you know. They think they got over. And I just sit and smile. Hmm, you, think, you, you think you won this one, right? Okay. All right. He says, and whoever curses you, I will curse. I didn't say that I would do it. I said God would do it. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. God required Abram to make a major change in his life, but God made promises to him if he was obedient. Now, a lot of us hear from God, but a whole lot of us are not obedient to God. How do I know that? Because I look at us. I know I'm not always obedient. You know, they say delayed compliance is disobedience. Well, then guilty. Because sometimes, you know, it takes a long time. You got to, you know, we rationalize things and Try to reason it out and say, well, okay, but uh, <laughs> all right. Okay, so I'm going to do it. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to. Well, when are you going to? You ain't going to be here forever, Willie Mary. <laughs> you know, sooner or later, you're not here anymore. Did you obey me or not? Think about it, everybody. Young people, think about it. Obey God now. Do what he tells you to do now. You don't want to be looking at this when you get 70 and going back, well, I would have, should have, whatever. But you, you wasted a lot of time. This is true. I'm being real. When God is prompting you to change your life, you got to believe that God is doing what's best for you. Oh, but I love this job. This pays me so well. I'm doing wonderful over here. You know, 
I'll, you know, I really like what I'm doing over here. This is good for me. I feel good going to work, you know. I feel good in this business. I feel good about this, that, and the other. But God said, that's not what I want you to do. And you can argue with God, and you can think that you're playing poker with God or whatever it is, whatever your game of chance is, lotto or whatever, and that it's going to be all right. But I tell you one thing, when God gets tired of us putting things off, and ignoring what he's told us to do, he will allow those things to dissipate. What are you saying? I'm saying they will go away. I'm saying they will pass like a vapor. You'll be wondering, oh God, how could that have happened? And God is saying, I tried to get your attention. I told you what I wanted you to do. No, but you wanted to do what you want to do. You know how we talk to our kids. And God said, okay, all right, that's what you want to do. Well, this is what I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. That's what the word says, Hebrews 11 and 16. Uh-huh. Well, you know, we, sometimes we say that we've got faith, but our actions don't really line up because we are doing what we want to do. Don't focus on what it's going to cost you to make a change. Don't focus on what it's going to cost you to make a change. Don't you think that if God tells us to discontinue something that we see as profitable or providing us with what we need, do you think he's going to lead you out to leave you alone? He's got something better. He's got better for you. He's saying you, the only way to get to this is you got to turn or lose that. We want to hold on to that. I, I've been there, not, so I know what I'm talking about. You want to hold on to this, and then you want to go over here. And God is saying, no, you're going to have to turn that loose because that is taking up too much of you. And I need you over here. I need your undivided attention. I need your efforts over here. Yeah, you could be doing it over there, but this is where I want you. Mm -hmm. Must be in the house. Hallelujah. Ain't but a few, but I know I got to be in the house today. Mm. Daniel 2 and 20, 21 says, Praise be to the name of God forever and ever. Wisdom and power of he, are his. He changes times and seasons. He deposes kings and raises up others. Mm -hmm. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the discerning. So wherever you are, whatever position you're in, understand that it's subject to change. It's, if God says enough of that, that's just it. I don't care who you are, and I don't care how great you are. If God says you got to go, you got to go. You got to move on. Not doing so is not going to work out in your favor. I'm almost finished. In the seasons of change, you need to hold on to what is unchanging. There are things that are going to change. And there's some things that won't ever change. God's love is one. Jeremiah 31 and 3, he says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Ever, can you imagine an everlasting love? Nobody can love us like that. Nobody can love you like that. Only God. Everlasting love. He says, I've drawn you with loving kindness. And he says, he was talking to Israel, he said, I'll build you up again and you will be rebuilt. Some of us have been through things and we've been torn down. We have been torn down. We have been torn to shreds. We're holding this nice facade for people, but on the inside, we are all broken up. We look like one of those 1,500-piece puzzles that I could never put together. I don't even know why they made them. Like, you got to be really intense to do this. <laughs> Can't focus that long <laughs> on little tiny pieces of stuff. But think about it. We've been broken down. We have been demolished by certain situations. Sometimes even from childhood, people did things to us that broke our spirit. They said things that hurt to the core. You've been through situations as adults where people have just literally trampled you. But God said, I will raise you up again. He did it. Let him go. She did it, forget about her. They did it, who cares? God said he would restore. God said he will build you up. God says that he's going to restore the years, even the years that were lost to the locusts and the canker worms and all that stuff. God made a promise. 
He doesn't lie. He doesn't lie. We, we, you, you know, we're focusing on the wrong thing. You know, we're wondering and worrying about how bad it was. You know, well, thank God it's over. And it will be if you let it go. But if you choose to hold on to it forever, because you got to always go back and reference how bad it was, that's your choice. God said, forget about it. Just like he, forget, he forgot about your sins and cast them as far as the east is from the west. We need to get a mindset that says, you know what? You did me wrong, but I'm casting you. I've forgiven you, but you are cast. You're gone. I'm not going to deal with that anymore. Because to deal with that now says two things. One, that God is not faithful, that God doesn't love me, and that two, I'm never going to get over it. And you and the devil are lying. Amen. Amen. You got to move forward. You got to move forward. You can be productive and have something new to show for your life. You say, oh, but you know my life has always been that way. Well, it doesn't have to be. God says, you know, you had some bad days, but he says there's going to be some good days. You had some sad days, but it's going to be some happy days. You know, God has made us promises. You got to have this hope. You got to have this mindset that it doesn't have to be this way all way. Just sometimes maybe you just need to go somewhere and see something different. You know, leave Miami for a minute. Go check out someplace else. You know, get out of Liberty City. Go over on the beach and look at something. Do something different. See something. See something. You know, go over on the West Coast. You know, go up the East Coast. Go wherever you want to go. Just go. Because this has got you bogged down. Your mind is, you know, you're just constantly replaying what's going on here. You know, take a break. Take a vacation. Come back. You'll see it differently. Sometimes you need to take a vacation from people. Because they've been, you know, they've been pulling on you. They've been clinging. They've been literally drawing the life out of you. You need a break. Take a break. Take a break so you can get a different perspective. See what God sees. Imagine what it could be like. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. If you're always thinking about the bad, always thinking about the ugly, then you ain't never going to have no good. How can you have good just dealing with that? There are some situations in our families where, you know, decisions are made and people do things. Well, guess what? They're all grown. They'll be all right. We're going to be okay. We're going to be okay. Pray. 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 And give them to God. Let God do what only God can do because we can't do it. We cannot do it. Love them. Love them. If your thoughts are not the same, then, you know, let them stay over there. They'll be all right after a while. Mm -hmm. they, they're going to be okay. We can rest in the unchanging love that God has for us and the fact that God will build us up again and again and again. As many times as he has to build you up, he'll build you up again and again and again. Because for some of us, we've been through so much that one time won't get it. Two times won't get it. But God said, I'll do it again. He's and again, over and over again, until you get this thing down on the inside of you and know who God is and who God created you to be and what God expects from you, what God has planned for you, what a glorious life God has laid out for you. Get your mind, get your mind right. You got to get your mind right. You won't always be in sorrow. You won't always mourn. Guess because what? This too shall pass. It's the season, but it's going to pass. I didn't come here to stay. That season is going to pass. When you discover how somebody loves you, how do you discover that? Well, usually it's when you're in a difficult time. Mm -hmm, and they don't leave your side. It's when you're struggling and they offer their support. It's when you need help and they're there to provide it for you. It's when you're in a bind and they can pick up the slack for you. I'm talking about God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. yeah, you know, you don't really know how deeply somebody loves you until you really need them. Uh, you know, because sometimes, uh, you know, people can tell you a lot of things. And we have a lot of good intentions. You know, words come easily. You know, and for some people, they are just, they got a silk tongue. They can just roll off stuff that sounds so good. It sounds so convincing don't mean nothing not one word of what they said lies 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 but when you really really need that person to come through where are they 
Hello? Do they come through for you? Uh, are they doing anything to help you? Well, I have a suggestion. When the season is over, I think you need to leave them there. Mm -hmm. I think that's where they need to stay. Matter of fact, that's probably a safe place for them to be. Just stay right there. I, I'm gone. You know, whatever. <laughs> that's it. That, enough of that. But sometimes you have to have that season to really know. Mm -hmm. You have to have that season to really know. Because, you know, your head is in the sky. You know, your eyes are just, you know, fluttering. You're so taken aback by what's being presented to you. You know, and you just think that all is well and it's always going to be that way. Ah, oh, but when the hammer hits, then you know. So, you know, it's okay. You, you're going to be all right. You, you went through it. You know, finally, we need to fall in love with God. <clears throat> we need to fall in love with God. We talk about it a lot, but we really need to fall in love with God. Because he's already in love with us. Uh -huh. Sometimes it's a one-sided affair. Because we're not really doing our part. But we need to fall in love with God. And the way that we do that is through the word of God. Through the word of God. Through prayer, prayer, a relationship with God. Through fasting. Through really dedicating ourselves and setting ourselves apart to begin to fall in love with God. Sometimes, you know, some of us have left our first love. Hello? Mm -hmm. We got busy, you know. We, we fell in love with Jesus. God started blessing, and we just got comfortable with that thing. You know, it's kind of like, oh, you're taken for granted. No, 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 no. That's not the way it's supposed to work. So get back to the word. The word is relevant for every situation. It's the one thing that stands above all else. It will never, ever fail. And the word is powerful. If we spend time in the word, we will see us. Nobody has to tell you anything. You will see you. I see me. I see my shortcomings. I know where I'm missing it through the word of God. Because if it doesn't line up, guess what? It doesn't fit. Hello. Yes, that's what I said. If I'm not lining up with the word, then I'm not fitting. I'm not fitting together with who God has called me to be. I'm not doing what he told me to do. So, you know, don't just read the word because, you know, you want to learn how to quote scriptures. That's good. We need to know them so that we can quote them because in a day when we don't have this written word, we'll have it on the inside of us. But that's not what it's about. Knowing God's word is about change. It's about causing us to see who we are. It's about causing us to want to become more like Christ. It's about things being different. You can't spend that much time reading and praying and fasting and being the same way. It does not work. Stop fooling yourself, and please don't try to fool me. Because I judge a tree by the fruit that it bears. I know that's the way you judge me. Hello? The word said I could. Hallelujah. So the word needs to be transforming us. And as it transforms us, we see who we are. We see who God is, how much he loves us. And you got to fall in love with him all over again. It strengthens your relationship. And when that relationship is strengthened, then you know, beyond the shadow of a doubt, when you're going through things, you know that he's there with you. Listen to the word. Meditate the word. Memorize the word. Spend time in prayer. Make your petitions known to God. When you come upon those areas where you got some things in your life and the Holy Spirit says, you need to go on a fast, go on a fast. You don't need to wait for the church to call a fast. Call one along with the Holy Ghost. Lord, you show me this. I want this out of my life. I'm going to proclaim a fast for me. Oh, the church ain't fasting. They don't need to fast. Do you need to fast? Fast. You fast. You can do that. Finally, when seasons change, you have a choice. You can choose to accept it and say that life is full of transitions. And God, it's not easy right now, but I thank you for your grace and your mercy. I thank you for your loving kindness. I thank you for your blessing. Every day that I get up, there's a new blessing. And I'm going through some stuff, but I'm going to be all right because you made a promise. Ah, oh, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm going to give you my future, God, because you hold the future. I'm going to give whatever it is that I've been struggling with, I give it to you. And God, whatever it is that you do, I'm going to make myself satisfied with that. Psalm 119 and 111. David says, your word have I hidden in my heart, in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. 
Nobody needs to preach sin. Nobody needs to beat you up about what you're doing. You know what you're doing. You know full well. I know full well what I'm doing. But when the word of God is hidden in your heart, it begins to judge those things. And you can feel, you know what, God, I'm missing something right here. This is not right. This is not pleasing with you. This thing needs to be changed. I put your word on the inside. Your word reveals the sin. It reveals the problems. It reveals the shortcomings. And because of that, God, I want to be different. I want to change. Many people don't want to change. They want you to pray for them, but they don't want to change. Oh, I have this problem. I have that problem. Okay, we can pray about it. But what are you doing? Do you want to change? Yeah, on Sunday morning, they want to change. Mm -hmm, but on Sunday evening, they're back to that same old thing. Well, that says to me, no, you don't really want to change. And if I can see it, of course God can see it. Mm -hmm. When you're going through something, hold on to God's hand. There was a song they used to sing in the old church, hold to God's unchanging hand. You remember that? You remember that song? God doesn't change. And they say hold to his hand, God's unchanging hand. Whatever storm you're going through, whatever your season is, hold on to God. Isaiah 41, 10 and 13 says, do not fear for I'm with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. He says, and I will uphold you with my righteous, his righteous hand. Yours is not righteous, but it is. His is. He said he'd hold you up. He says, for I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand. I told you to hold his hand. And says to you, don't fear. Don't worry. Don't be upset. Don't be dismayed. Don't be anxious. He says, I'll help you. I'm going through my season, God, but you said you got my hand, God. You said that you're going to help me, God. You said that you would uphold me, God. You said that you would vindicate me, God. Things are going on that I don't understand and shouldn't be happening. But you said in your word, you got to know what the word says. You got to have the word on the inside of you. When you're going through tests and trials, you got to be able to let the word go. Bring the, the word, if it's on the inside of you, believe me, when you're going through things, it comes up and it just starts playing over and over and over and over again. It may be one scripture, two scriptures, three scriptures, but they just keep coming up and they encourage you. And you say, God, I know that this thing is going to be all right. It's not easy right now, God, but I'm trusting you. I'm believing what your word says. And the only, only thing that comes out of you needs to be the word of God. People look at you and they don't understand how you can be like that. But it's the peace of God that passeth all understanding that comes from knowing who God is, knowing whose you are, knowing what God has promised you and with that you can say you know what God it's gonna be all right I know it's gonna be all right I'm trusting you God uh-huh I'm trusting you God huh? glory to God hallelujah 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 God I'm trusting you I'm trusting you Woo. glory to God Woo, that understanding Woo. thank you Jesus hallelujah Woo. glory to God mm. the peace of God that transcends human understanding. People don't understand how you can stand through that. They don't understand what you're going through. But they look at you and because of what you're going through and the way you go through it, God gets the glory. God said the glory is his. He doesn't share it with anybody. But sometimes he's got to use us. He has to lead us in places. He has to allow us to have experiences so that we can go through and we can be a shining light for somebody else. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Woo, the peace of God that transcends everything. Going through a season. Going in a storm. In the midst of turmoil. But you got peace. Hallelujah. You got peace on the inside. And it shows on the outside. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Who wouldn't serve a God like this? Who wouldn't love a God like this? Sometimes we hurt. And God knows we're hurting. Mm -hmm. He knows we're hurting. God understands what we're going through. He's a God who can feel our infirmities. He's not a God who's so far away that he can't understand and feel and hear from us. And know that, he, that we need him. And he said, if you cry out to me, I'll hear you. Not only do I hear you, he says, but I'll answer. Hallelujah. Trust God. Trust God. Hallelujah. Trust God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God is a good God. God is a good God. God is a good God. 
Woo, glory! Hallelujah! Woo, glory to God! Hallelujah! 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 Glory to God! Hallelujah! Storms of life, storms of life, seasons of life, they're going to change, but God changes not. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He is the same God. The same God who brought you through in 1965 is the same God who will bring you through in 2020. He's the same God. He's the same God. The same God who delivered you out of the lion's den. <laughs> we all been there. You know, they used to preach that in the old church. But some of us have literally been through some things that felt like the lion's den. God delivered us out of that, and he's the same God. He's the same God. He doesn't change. He doesn't fail. He never leaves us, nor will he ever, ever, ever forsake us. Hallelujah. At this time, if there's anybody who doesn't know the Lord as your Savior, whether you be in this building or you be viewing this live stream, I encourage you to get to know Jesus. The promises that I've talked about today are a result of people who know that they've accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. It's not a hard thing to do. It doesn't require a lot of effort. Jesus said in John 11 and 25, I am the resurrection. Hallelujah. He says, and the life. And he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Two, two interpretations of that. Spiritually dead, because you don't know who Jesus is. When you believe in Jesus Christ, you now come alive. It's called the new birth. The new birth, now you are alive. For those believers who die in Christ Jesus, the ones who are saved, even though they go to sleep, hallelujah, they're not dead. Glory to God. Jesus has promised that they shall live again. Romans 10.10 10 says, with a heart you believe. So you got to hear the word. And once you've heard the word, then you got to believe in your heart what the word says. You believe unto righteousness. You have no righteousness of your own. I have none of myself. You can't clean yourself up. You can't make it right. You can't fix it up. God has given us his son Jesus to be our righteousness. Only one way to God, and that's through Jesus Christ. He is the door through which everyone who believes must pass. And once you've heard, then your mouth has to make a confession. You have to say, Lord, I'm a sinner and I need a savior. I believe that you sent your son Jesus Christ into this world to redeem us back to you. I acknowledge my sin and I now ask Jesus Christ to come into my life and to be the Lord and the savior of my life. Once you've said that and you honestly meant that, you are now saved and you go and tell somebody that today I received Jesus Christ as my Lord and savior. I now confess that I'm saved. Get in your Bible. Read the word of God. Get into a church or online where they are teaching the word of God. And grow in your faith. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God, we thank you for the word. We thank you, God, for your faithfulness concerning us. All that you have done and all that you are doing. It's now time for the offering. We do ask that if you're going to use the credit card machine there in the back, over there in the corner, please use it now while they're here. That way, once they're inside the office, then you don't need to knock on the door. Please. Thank you. Amen. Father, as we come.